Hello, everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Well, we have returned from the combine. Um, it was interesting. I think we may have been better off, honestly, just watching it at home. Did we get any additional perspective from being there? Yes and no. We've heard some interesting free agent rumors, and we've heard a couple other things that were interesting. But let's get into the Combine real quick. Combine is something that uh, I, uh, a, a general manager told me a long, long time ago that the Combine is basically just a fashion show in shorts. That's all it is. It's a dress rehearsal for nothing. Uh, you 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 find more Mike Mamulas than you find the studs at these combines because a lot of times people I, I, he even said that the general public gets more interested in the combine than we you know than the scouts do only because the scouts take it with a grain of salt because they usually have a history of a body of work that they go off of and seeing a guy in his shorts is not you know. If that was the case, then when they saw Tom Brady in his shorts at the combine years ago, he should never even have been drafted in the seventh round. And I don't, I don't know, but I think that Tom Brady turned out to be pretty good. I just wanted to get into a couple of things real quick about the combine. You know, everyone is going crazy over the guy from Louisville who ran a 5-1 in the 40-yard dash. I'm not even going to go through his name because I'm tired of hearing his name because, honestly, that's all he did at the combine. That's it. He ran the 40-yard dash. His bench press, he only bench pressed 23, 23 reps. He did not do the vertical jump. He did not do the broad jump. He did not do the three-cone drill. He did not do the 20-yard shuttle. And honestly, if I'm looking at an offensive lineman, I want to see what his vertical leap is. Now, of course, you know you're not jumping straight up from the line, but I wanted to see what the vertical leap is because of the fact that I want to see his explosiveness. Same with the broad jump. And in the three-cone drill, I want to see his footwork. I, I don't want to just see, okay, I ran the fa- you know, one of the fastest times for an offensive lineman at 364 pounds, but I only bench-pressed 23 reps. I mean, come on. I mean, that's, that's, that's you know, that's, that's a little silly that everyone's going crazy over that and no one's actually looking at the fact that he did not participate in any other drills. Now, if you want to sit there and kind of figure out from the combine who helped himself, uh, I mean, you got to take a look at Ruiz out of Michigan. You know, Ruiz actually had a really good combine. Yeah, you know, our guy from Louisville ran a 5-1, excuse me, Ruiz won a 5.08. He also had a bench press at 28. He has a vertical leap of 33 inches. His broad jump was 113 inches, and he ran a three-cone drill in 7.91 seconds, and he did the 20-yard shuttle at 4.64 seconds. That's a player that helped himself. That's a player to me that showed his athletic ability, showed his explosiveness. We've known from his college days that he's got an excellent snap to snap quickness, that he plays with fantastic leverage. You know, he's compact. You know, he, he's got a powerful punch. He's got great arm extension. This is a guy that we've seen him play and we've seen these things. You know, he, you know, he, he, his frame, you know, they, they, you know, and I heard at the combine too, his frame was not what they were referred to as a desired width, you know, and again, you're looking at his frame again, you look at, you're looking at him in shorts, but he is a player at Michigan that played well. And I really think that he helped his draft status, but like I said, he participated in all the drills. You know, and like I said, I have a problem with a player that runs a fast 40 and then turns around and says, "Ah, I'm not going to do anything else. You know, that, that's, that slightly concerns me, you know? And like I said, if you look at his bench press, you would think a guy at that size would be able to bench press more than 23 reps. But you're all enamored by his speed. You know what? Last time I checked, 
you don't get a running start from the offensive line position. Your position more is a power position and explosion position, so you would be looking more for a player that has an explosive first step, not that not who can run in forty yards. I mean that's I mean that's that's why I laugh when I when I see some of these things. You know, and then they're like, well, he he was just cruising at that speed. Okay, yeah, but you also got a guy that ran a four eight five, a four nine one, a four nine three. Yeah, the guy has got size, but who cares if he can run a straight line? Like I said, I want someone that can actually have some explosion off the line and someone that has the strength. You know, and that's why I said, I, I, you know, again, if you, this is only looking at this from a perspective of at the combine. And that's the only thing. And that's the thing I laugh about because people are like, wow, he ran this great 40. And yeah, Mike Muller was a combine hero. Look how that turned out for the Eagles. So being enamored by one person's speed or their time on their on their 40 just because of their size, that's great and all. But last time, like I said, last time I checked, as an offensive lineman, you're playing in a six-foot box. You're not running down the field. And I'm just concerned of the fact that he did not participate in any of the other drills. And like I said, he did the 40 and the bench. That's all he did. And then the fans are like, oh, wow, that's, that, 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 that's the greatest thing anymore. We should, we should sign him. We should draft him. No. <laughs> 140 time does not negate his body of work over in college. And, and it's the same thing one slow 40 time doesn't. And again, he played at Louisville. You know, he's, he's, he's not playing against, you know, he's not playing against the powerhouses. You know, and like I said, I get concerned for the guy that size who can't lift, who can't bench more than 23 times. You know, I mean, you know, like I said, and he's had weight issues, you know, all through college. So we can't just look at, the, you know, like I said, speed. Like I said, to me, Ruiz would really, really help himself. If you, if any player helps himself to the combat and offensive line position, I would definitely say it's Ruiz. Only because of the fact, like I said, he participated in all the drills and he showed explosive explosiveness and speed and again like i said i think someone like andrew thomas who did participate in all the drills as well you know may have potentially hurt his stock a little because of the fact that you know he only benched 21 times he's only got a 30 inch vertical leap he's got a a one and a a one hundred and point nine inches on the broad jump he did the cone drill in 7.58 and he did the shuttle in 4.66 so if you're looking at those are average combine numbers, you know. So why I think, like I said, he is an excellent talent and he played against excellent uh, competition. If you take a look at what he did at the combine, then you should be like, well, you know, maybe he, maybe he is, um, you know, maybe he's not as great as everyone thinks he is. I, I think that. Um, one scout basically said with Andrew Thomas when we were there that he is more of a boom or a bust prospect. That he could either he could, we could either hit a home run with him or he could turn out to be Eric Flowers. So I mean that 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 is something that needs to be looked at looked at as well. Now one of the things that I did love at the combine was Isaiah Simmons. Yes, Isaiah Simmons ran a four three nine, which is fantastic, which was faster than Saquon Barkley. You know, he had a wonderful broad jump at 132 inches, vertical leap of almost 40 inches. So he shows, again, he shows explosiveness. And like I said, at his size at 200, almost 240 pounds, he he really shows that he could be an impact, impact player, not only in the linebacker position, but potentially as well in other positions. You know, maybe, you know, maybe rolling out into free safety. You know, maybe run into the strong safety position. So I mean, I, I think that um, he 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 show he really did show his worth at the combine, I, and I think that's I think that's fantastic. Um, like I said, he he was a li- he you know I, I mean I think we all knew the type of player that he was or the type of player that he could be, but I really think that he showed you know he showed his potential. At the combine, I would like to have seen him done the bench press. I'd like to have seen him throw uh, three cone drill. Hopefully, these are things that we will see 
at his pro day, if he has a pro day. But these are definitely some things that I would like to see him go through. I think a player that really helped again at the combine, especially from the linebacker position, is Zach. Is Zach Bond out of uh, Wisconsin. Um, he participated in all the drills. He actually did fairly impressive in all the drills. He ran a 4.65. He was 24 reps on the bench. He had a vertical leap of 32.5 inches, broad jump 115 inches and he did the three cone drill in seven uh, seven seconds and the shuttle a uh, 20 yard shuttle in 4.31 seconds uh, he is another player that i was actually kind of impressed with at the combine but again like i said it's a fashion show in shorts um you know he he had you kind of see that he has the explosiveness um you know the, the only problem is he, he doesn't have the desire and again this is coming from another scout he said he doesn't have the desired frame to be a full-time NFL edge rusher. And again, like I said, maybe he's not going to be an edge rusher. Maybe he is going to be more into the linebacker position. But I think he's shown his ability and his explosiveness and just his overall physicality. I mean, I always thought that he was, um, especially going to college, I always thought he was not the greatest athlete. But you know what? He really showed me that he is, you know, he does have some, he does have some athletic skills and some athletic strength. Um, so, you know, I, I did find that, uh, I did find that interesting. One other linebacker that I really thought helped himself at the combine uh, was going to be Willie Gay Jr. at a Mississippi State. I think he, his, his <sighs> Willie Gay's problems has never really been, on the field. It's been off the field. Um, he had some issues, um, you know, with, with the MC, uh, he lost, uh, he lost eight games, I believe was due to an NCA violation, uh, which was pertaining to an academic tutor. So his problems have always been off the field. He, he's really never, he's never really gotten the full chance to, to get, you know, to get on the field. It was held, it was eight games he was held out for in 2019. Um, but like I said, he, he is a guy, again, he's a little short too. He's at, he's looking at six one, but he, he's, he's like to refer to as a, uh, he's a fire hydrant. He's 243 pounds, but you know, like I said, he's, he had a pretty impressive combine. He ran all the drills. He did a four, four, six, 21 reps on the bench, almost a 40 inch vertical leap, 136 on the broad jump, 7.8 seconds on the cones, 4.3 on the shuttle. So I really do think that he helped. His, his his combine statistics, I don't think he's going to go beyond the fourth round. I mean, I don't think he's going to be any higher than the fourth round, but he's a player that um, I really think helped his combine. Now, who hurt his combine, I feel, at the linebacker position was going to be Evan Weaver. Evan Weaver, we did a video on, um, and it was basically the fact that he is an interesting perspective for the Giants, but he's only going to be a two-down player. I mean... I mean, he he kind of hurt himself at the combine a little bit. I mean, his forty was kind of slow for his position. He ran a four seven six. He only had fifteen on the bench, thirty two inch vertical. He had a nice broad jump at one seventeen. His cone drill was at seven point two, and his shuttle was at his shuttle was at uh, four point two seconds. So he kind of proved that he did not have the athletic ability that we have kind of been saying that he has not had coming out of California. Um, but like I said, I think that um, I think he's more hurt his combine. I mean, his combine hurt his draft status a little bit more than it helped with anybody else. Um, so we're you know we're 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 gonna kind of we're gonna kind of go from there with Evan. But like I said, I really don't think that um, he helped his statistics or his stats any or his ability to move up into the combine. And now speaking of the combine, one of the things what we did is, you know, like I said, we kind of kind of walked around, kind of overheard some conversations, kind of, you know, spoke to a few people, and we wanted to talk quickly about some interesting trade rumors that we heard. Now, the first thing we were bouncing around about was Washington Redskins. Yes, there has been scuttlebutt that they are in love with Tua. Now, I find it interesting that when we were around the hotel, yeah, you you heard the rumblings about Washington taking a look at Tua at that spot, kind of doing a Kyler Murray and, you know, trying to get rid of Haskins and picking up Tua in that uh, in that second spot. 
Um, one of the other interesting rumors that I heard, and again, this was just a rumor, was that potentially Ron Rivera may have been interested in bringing Cam Newton over to Washington. Someone was mentioning the fact that they would take the second pick in Dwayne Haskins and move it to the seventh pick, trade the second and the seventh and over for Isaiah Simmons, and then swap Haskins out with Cam Newton. Now, again, like I said, and then they would pick up a line. They would then try to take Isaiah Simmons uh, with the second pick to try to replace Luke Keekley, And they would get rid of their Cam Newton situation, and they would also be able to draft someone later in the round and they would, you know, uh, maybe a quarterback later in the draft, but then they would also have Dwayne Haskins. But I, I don't see that rumor happening. Like I said, it was just a rumor that was walking, that was wandering around a couple people, but the rumor for Tua to Washington, it gained a lot of rumbles. Um, and I think that uh, we were never a Dwayne Haskins fan, but we still think he has, you know, NFL potential. But it is something that we heard over and over again while we were there. Um, I would not be shocked if they took him and, and traded uh, trade out Dwayne Haskins. Now, my only problem with Dwayne has, trading out Dwayne Haskins is I don't think you're going to get the same return that they got for Josh Rosen because I think Haskins has more issues than Rosen. Rosen right now, of course, we know sucks. But I think Dwayne Haskins is going to be more of an issue person right now. Um so, I mean, you know, I, I could see that, you know, like I said, could I see that happening? Yes. Will it happen? Who knows? Um, there is still a lot of talk about um, Dolphins taking a quarterback. Um, there was a lot of scuttlebutt now about Jordan Love going to the Chargers at six. I think there was some people that thought, you know, that uh, he would be a good fit for the system that they have. Um, were we hearing about anyone trading out? For that, no, we didn't. We didn't really hear anyone about you know trading out of that position for that. Um, but like I said, I really think that it was interesting that some of the things that we heard in reference to what they could potentially do with the quarterback over over what you call it over in San Diego. No one was really talking much about trading up San Diego. I think I I think Miami and San Diego have a plan. Uh, how the draft is going to shake out. I do think that Detroit is still going to stay at that third pick. And like I said, I heard Scott about that. They're still going to go with Chase Young. Um, but then there's some talk that they may go Isaiah Simmons. I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it's going to be interesting. I think it even may come down to the perspective that the Giants may have an opportunity to get Chase Young now. And I, I really think that I, Isaiah Simmons um, is going to be in play. But I don't see Isaiah Simmons. I kind of see Isaiah Simmons falling into a Josh Allen perspective that if he falls beyond the Giants past four, that they wouldn't be shocked. But um, I don't know. And the whole Brown rumor with the Giants, the defensive tackle, uh, I, I think a lot of people are reading way too much into it because of the fact that, uh, yes, it, Yes, Gettleman likes the big guys. Gettleman likes the big dudes. But I don't see him. Yeah, and the whole thing is, well, we're going to trade Dalvin Tomlinson because he's in the last year's contract, and we're going to pick up another defensive lineman. I, I don't see that happening. I think a lot of people get excited about nothing. I see that more as a smokescreen than anything else. But, like I said, you never know. I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. I think, I think he would be run out of town on a rail if he made a move such as that. But... Um, but like I said, I would be not. I would not be shocked. Like I said, if Tua went to the Redskins, um, I think Rivera has an infatuation with Tua right now. And like I said, I think that the feeling in Washington is that Dwayne Haskins is never going to reach the the heights that they thought he would. And from a perspective of draft capital, like I said, I've talked to a couple people, and they're like, I don't think they're going to get back what they think they're going to get back. But um, like I said, I think for the Giants' perspective that we could potentially be in play for either Chase Young or Isaiah Simmons, according to some of the scuttlebutt that you hear going around. We're going to do a, a uh, video next week or on Wednesday about free agents again. There was a stupid rumor going around about Jack Conklin signing with the Jets, even though the legal tampering period, as we know, does not start till the 16th. 
So I don't know why people would be coming out with these kind of cockamamie rumors and reporting them, but that's just what people do. So, uh, but we'll do a little bit more of a free agent show coming up. Uh, free agency, of course, going to be from the draft, and I think free agency is also going to dictate where we are going to go in the draft. Um, there is still talk that we're going to take a corner. You know, we heard that a couple times. But uh, like I said, we will kind of go from there. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Thanks for listening.